In this video, I'm going to review and discuss this plant-based resin by Anycubic, which looks suspiciously like bubblegum, but it definitely isn't bubblegum. Don't ask me how I know that. Of course, I can't make this kind of review video without talking about some of the claims that Anycubic has made about this resin that makes it so much different than regular resin. And to do that, I am bringing on a special guest who is much more qualified than I am to talk about chemical things. So let's just jump right in. Hi there, my name is Danny, the 3D Printing DM. Welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. Anycubic sent me this plant-based resin to test and to see what I thought. I've had it for several weeks now and I've been testing it in my spare time. First, let's go over what makes this plant-based resin different according to Anycubic. First, it's supposedly low odor. <laughs> I mean, if this guy doesn't convince you of the smell difference, I don't know what can, okay? Next, it's undergone more safety testing. I think that's what uh, use more safety means. It is biodegradable, made from soybean oil, which is pretty significant. And it's why the name is plant-based resin. Got low shrinkage, which is to provide better print quality, fresh color. Ladies and gentlemen, definitely, there's, there's no question. You can just look right next to me. I don't even need to spend more time on this claim. Like, it's solved. This is bubblegum color, okay? Con candy bubblegum, regular pink, I mean, it is vibrant, man, what can I say? There's also a wider spectrum of UV sensitivity, which means uh, more printers can print it than just the Anycubic Photon. I actually test printed these on the Epax X1, which is that printer that I have back there. So that is also definitely true. Most significant difference that I could bring up here is price. The one liter bottle is like over 50% more expensive than both Elegoo Gray, one of its competitors, and Anycubic Gray. And the same goes for some of the other colored alternatives on both ends. And that price difference is one of the big reasons why I wanna talk about all the differences with this resin and some of those claims that they make so that you can make the decision whether that price increase is worth it to you or not. First up, this mail. I've printed a lot of resin prints and I've printed using some stinky resins. This one definitely is not stinky. It's on the lower end of the stink spectrum that exists. But I also do feel like some of the other resins that I've been trying lately have also not been so stinky. So maybe they're just getting better at making less stinky resins. I don't know. So uh, yeah, I don't think it's really that stinky at all. Maybe this is because I'm printing in my garage which is a generally pretty open area. Maybe my nose just isn't as sensitive. This is just my experience. It's one of those things that you can't really convey how strong a smell is digitally over a video. So, sorry about that. One day I'll have to have a bunch of strangers come in this room and see if it smells them and do a, a kind of a sniff test if that's a smart idea, I don't know, maybe. Speaking of sniff tests, let's talk safety. <laughs> There's a lot of debate within the resin 3D printing community about the safety of resin in general. Even just being in the same room as printers going with there being relatively little evidence as far as whether it's really safe or not safe because this is still pretty young technology. And really this requires a completely separate video in my opinion. So I'm not gonna get too deep into this, but I took a look at the SDS sheets for this resin the plant-based resin, and I looked over them with my very good friend and an actual chemist, Brent, of Goobertown Hobbies. Brent, to me, is one of the most relaxing and easy to watch channels on YouTube. Not just hobby channels, channels. And if you're into just hobbying and just positivity and the science behind a lot of the things that we do in the miniature hobby, whether it's for tabletop gaming like D&D or not, He's got a lot of older videos on his channel talking about the chemistry behind things like super glue. Aside from YouTube qualifications, Brent has a legit PhD in chemistry and he's worked as a chemist for many years. So in other words, he's much better and much more qualified to talk about this sort of thing and safety than me. Danny, a little Joe Schmo YouTuber. I am so happy to know him as a friend and to be able to talk to him about this. And I'm so grateful he gave me a little bit of his time to pick his brain. Here are the salient points. Even with some of the claims on their Amazon listing, for example, 
no VOCs, no BPA, no harmful chemicals. The SDS sheet of this plant-based resin is actually very similar to the SDS sheet of regular resin, regardless of those claims that it's both safe, eco-friendly, and biodegradable. Now the SDS for both plant-based resin and regular resins say these are irritants. But hold up, I don't want that to sound alarmist. There's lots of things that are uh, that are irritants that we use in daily life, like bleach for your laundry or even IPA for cleaning your resin. This is just a warning and it's really just telling us that we should handle it more carefully, like we would with anything else that might be sensitive or harmful if we touch it or ingest it. Both the plant-based resin and the regular resin says this resin has some aquatic toxicity, so don't dump these on the ground or down your sink or drain. Wear nitrile gloves and goggles and make sure you wash your skin immediately if you come in direct contact with them. And I know I've made uh, some jokes about bubble gum, but uh, of course, please don't eat or drink this. Uh, seriously, please, please. Brent, thank you so much for helping me understand what I've just shared. At the end of this video, go ahead, do me a favor, show Brent some love, head on to his channel, which is down in the link below. I promise you won't regret it. It's a lot of fun. Now let's talk print quality. After a few initial test prints from Lost Adventure Stretch Goals and playing around with some different supports, I decided to stop messing around with support settings and test printed some minis from the Amazon's Kickstarter being run by Francesca of Artisans Guild, who I've been big supporters of since they came on the scene several months ago. If you like the minis that you're about to see, you can check out their Kickstarter down below for more of that goodness. Check these out. These minis printed really well detail-wise. I mean, obviously these are just beautiful models, but I wouldn't go as far as saying that these were better in this particular resin versus other resins that I've printed in. My experience with different resins has been that once you lock in the right settings in terms of, in terms of exposure and things like that, quality is generally pretty similar among all of these printers in this general range. But again, that's just been my experience with the printers I've tested. Another thing I wanna share is that some of these blue minis did cure kinda of tacky for me. I washed these really pretty thoroughly. I let them air dry before curing and after the first batch were kinda of tacky. I also tried towel drying them afterwards. I'm cleaning them with a double bath of IPA and even the maroon, that bubblegum pink, even those prints didn't have the same kind of tackiness. I'm not sure why this has never happened to me before. If you have any idea what might have been causing this, then please let me know. I don't think that this is really related to the resin, but probably something to do with my cleanup process, I would assume. But if you do know, please feel free to leave a comment. The last point I wanna bring up is related to the brittleness and the stiffness of these prints in relation to some other resins I've used before. They actually have some bounce and flex to them, which is a really good thing because it means they're more durable. I haven't done a strength test or anything like that, but I have dropped them already and they survived, which I've dropped more brittle ones too and they've survived too, but I can just tell you in general that having a little bit of flex in your minis is actually a very good thing. There's people that pay a lot of extra money for flex resins to mix them in with the regular more brittle resins in order to be able to get this type of feature. So to have this is actually really nice and I really like this. So that's a hidden plus. Basically, ladies and gentlemen, really great print quality. According to the SDS, yes, it is soy based, but some soy, some safety precautions are still required. Not stinky to me, at least when compared with the other six resins I've tried. Very vibrant color, more flexible than other resins, and definitely more expensive. If you wanna try some of this bubblegum colored plant based resin that I got behind me here today, got some links in the description below for you. Check it out. If you enjoyed this video and like what I do here on 3D Printing Tabletop, you can support me on Patreon. This is a wonderful way to support the videos that I make directly. And if Patreon isn't your thing, but if you are interested in still supporting the channel, you wanna print some really nice models, I also have late pledges for our Kickstarters that we've run the last few years down below as well. Because of your support through Patreon and these late pledges, I'm able to keep making these videos for you and sharing them like I really love doing, in case you can't tell. As always, thank you for watching, happy printing, and happy gaming.